Frank Sinatra, often referred to as Old Blue Eyes, was a legendary figure in the world of music and entertainment. His captivating voice and charismatic persona left an enduring mark on the 20th century. Let's explore seven intriguing facts about this iconic singer, actor, and cultural icon. Number one, he was one of the first modern teen idols. Frank Sinatra's journey to teen heartthrob status began in the 1930s with the Hoboken Four, and it gained momentum when he joined the famed Tommy Dorsey Band. Yet, true Sinatra mania occurred in the early 1940s when he began recording solo songs. Before that, music primarily catered to adults and teenagers weren't yet seen as a distinct group. The idea of young people having an influence over music sales was entirely new. His first performance at New York's Paramount Theater on December 30, 1942 caused a fan frenzy. The audience screamed, fainted, swarmed him for autographs, and even caused traffic disruptions in Times Square. This level of reaction hadn't been seen since the days of Rudy Valentino a generation earlier. It wasn't solely Sinatra's talent and hit songs, but also his charisma that contributed to his appeal. Newsweek called it mass delirium. Fans of various ages, including the enthusiastic Bobby Soxers, young female fans known for wearing Bobby socks, joined Sinatra fan clubs that expanded rapidly. His popularity extended to performances at the City College of New York and the Hollywood Bowl in August 1943 during a nationwide tour. At every stop, the enthusiastic crowds were there. In 1944, Frank Sinatra tried his hand at acting starring in the films Higher and Higher and Step Lively. His popularity soared to such heights that the police had to deal with riots as fans refused to leave the theater after the movies ended. The theaters were packed and fans stayed to watch the same film multiple times in a row. Number two, his ties to the mafia and FBI file. For more than four decades, the Federal Bureau of Investigation closely monitored Sinatra, compiling extensive records on his activities, conversations, and associations. These files, revealed after Sinatra's death in 1998, provide a gripping account of his turbulent life. Despite Sinatra's consistent denial of ties to organized crime, the FBI documented his relationships with notable mafia figures including his close friendship with Chicago mob boss Sam Giancana. Sinatra allegedly played a role in introducing Giancana to John F. Kennedy's 1960 campaign in an effort to secure union votes for the future president. He even performed at Giancana's Chicago club as a gesture of gratitude. Sinatra also introduced Kennedy to Judith Campbell Exner, Giancana's girlfriend, sparking a years-long affair. Sinatra's FBI files show his links to other mobsters, including gifts from Joseph and Charles Fischetti, known for their involvement in illegal gambling with the Chicago outfit. Sinatra even made a Godfather-style appearance at mobster Angelo Bruno's daughter's wedding in Atlantic City. There's also evidence the mob helped Sinatra get out of a 1951 contract. Sinatra had a well-documented connection with Detroit mobster Anthony and Vito Giacoloni. FBI agents witnessed their frequent interactions, even spending weekends socializing before and after Sinatra's performances. Despite his connections to organized crime figures, Sinatra was never charged with criminal activities related to these associations. Number three, he had a close friendship with John F. Kennedy. In 1960, a notable encounter occurred between two prominent figures, John F. Kennedy, a Massachusetts senator with presidential aspirations, and Frank Sinatra, the legendary Hollywood icon. This unexpected meeting took place during one of Sinatra's Rat Pack performances at the Sands Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Sinatra's introduction of Kennedy as the next president of the United States created a distinctive moment where the world of politics and entertainment converged in a manner rarely seen during that era. Their friendship had been growing for some years. The partnership was based on shared interests. 
Sinatra's influence as a top-selling artist and movie star made him the ideal candidate to gather fellow entertainers to support Kennedy. In addition, JFK's father, Joseph Kennedy, was interested in Sinatra's organized crime connections to influence the union vote for his son. Mutual admiration also played a role. Sinatra symbolized Hollywood glamour, while Kennedy represented political power. They were envious of each other's lives. Their shared love for partying cemented their bond. They partied in Las Vegas during the campaign and Sinatra introduced Kennedy to Marilyn Monroe and Judith Campbell, with whom he allegedly had affairs. However, their friendship didn't last long. After Kennedy had been in the White House for about a year and a half, their warm relationship started to fade. Sinatra's rumored ties to the mob made people in the White House see him as a political problem, especially Bobby Kennedy. Kennedy distanced himself from Sinatra, and their rift escalated when Kennedy chose to stay with Bing Crosby instead of Sinatra during a 1962 visit to Palm Springs. Sinatra had invested a lot in preparations for Kennedy's visit, including a helicopter landing pad and accommodations for the Secret Service. Despite their falling out, Sinatra was deeply saddened by Kennedy's assassination. According to his daughter Nancy, he cried for days after Kennedy's death. Number four, he fought for civil rights. Frank Sinatra's support for civil rights may seem surprising given his upbringing in a New Jersey neighborhood with ethnic tensions. He transcended these prejudices and championed the rights of all, regardless of race, both in public and private life. Sinatra's journey to success was challenging, filled with ups and downs. He respected music and never let skin color affect his judgment. He supported black performers and ensured they were treated equally, insisting on integrated orchestras for his albums and live tours. Frank Sinatra's influence extended to his celebrated Rat Pack, a diverse ensemble representing various segments of American society. In a time when Las Vegas hotels practiced racial segregation, Sinatra leveraged his influence to challenge these practices. He championed black entertainers such as Sammy Davis Jr., ensuring they received fair treatment and gained entry to venues that had previously denied them. Sinatra publicly refused to perform at clubs that practiced racial segregation, and his commitment to equal treatment extended into his private life. He made integration fashionable and openly supported it. On a national level, Sinatra provided financial support to Martin Luther King and actively participated in civil rights fundraisers, earning a lifetime award from the NAACP. In an Ebony Magazine article, he eloquently stated that a friend knows no race, class, or minority, emphasizing that his friendships were built on affection, mutual respect, and shared values. Number five, he went on a rampage in Las Vegas. In 1967, Frank Sinatra's gambling credit at the Sands Casino was cut off by the famed businessman Howard Hughes, who had bought the Sands that year. Sinatra supposedly owed the casino $200,000. Sinatra got extremely angry and left before a scheduled performance. He shouted at the casino staff, damaged furniture in his penthouse, crashed a baggage cart through a glass window in the shopping area, and tore out wires from the hotel's phone system before he left. He quickly returned to the Sands and insisted on speaking with the casino manager, Carl Cohen. Cohen agreed to meet him, and enraged Sinatra started swearing at Cohen, threatening him. He even flipped over a table with breakfast on it, spilling food and hot coffee on Cohen. In response, Cohen punched Sinatra in the mouth, causing him to bleed. Sinatra tried to throw a chair at Cohen, but ended up hitting a security guard by mistake. After that, Sinatra left the casino. Number six, his son, Frank Jr., was kidnapped and held for ransom. Frank Sinatra Jr. was kidnapped when he was 19 years old on December 8, 1963. The kidnapping took place in room 417 at Harrah's Lake Tahoe. He was released just two days later after his father paid a $240,000 ransom to the kidnappers. That amount would be worth more than $2 million today. 
Interestingly, Sinatra had offered even more money, but the kidnappers surprisingly turned down the larger amount. Three men were quickly apprehended, tried, and found guilty of kidnapping. Barry Keenan, the leader of the group, received a life sentence for his involvement. However, he served only four and a half years in prison. His early release came after he was declared legally insane during the kidnapping. Following his release, Keenan found success as a real estate developer. The kidnappers had insisted on using payphones for communication. This worried Frank Sr. because he feared running out of coins. As a result, he always carried 10 dimes with him from then on, and he was even laid to rest with 10 dimes in his pocket. During the kidnapping, Frank Sr. and the Rat Pack were shooting the film Robin and the Seven Hoods. The stress from the kidnapping and the recent assassination of Sinatra's friend John F. Kennedy just weeks earlier made Sinatra consider stopping the film's production. However, he decided to finish the movie. Number seven. He had a bizarre feud with Marlon Brando. Frank Sinatra and Marlon Brando had a bitter rivalry on the set of the 1955 movie, Guys and Dolls. Sinatra was upset because he believed Brando had taken a role he wanted. At first, their feud was minor, but it escalated when Sinatra began calling Brando mumbles to annoy him. In return, Brando pretended to forget his lines during a scene that required Sinatra to eat cake purposely forcing him to reshoot it multiple times. Adding to the tension, the press mocked Brando for doing a comedy which didn't fit his serious image. Sinatra was also jealous of Brando's recent Academy Award win. Sinatra and Brando stopped talking directly, using other people for communication. Brando's friend, Carlo Fiore, said that things got worse when Sinatra's wife, Ava Gardner, spent time in Brando's dressing room in Sinatra's absence. This situation eventually led to Brando's abduction by individuals associated with the Mafia, possibly connected to Sinatra. At a rest stop, three armed men abducted Brando. One of them gave him a scary choice. A quick death with a bullet to the heart or a gruesome life with disfigurement impossible to fix by plastic surgery. Brando was terrified. According to Fiore, he believed Sinatra was involved in the abduction, but there was no concrete evidence to support this claim. Brando was released unharmed, and Guys and Dolls was a success. However, the feud with Sinatra lingered. Years later, Brando angered Sinatra once more by assuming a lead role in The Godfather, a role that the author of source material, Mario Puzo, claimed Sinatra wanted. Predictably, Brando's performance earned him another Academy Award. In the end, Frank Sinatra's story is a tapestry woven with both remarkable achievements and notable flaws. The seven astonishing facts we've explored offer a glimpse into the complex world of this legendary figure. Sinatra's life is a reminder that even our greatest icons are human, complete with their virtues and vices, and his enduring legacy continues to fascinate and provoke thought. I'm so afraid that you may vanish in the air. So darling, if our romance should break up. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe for more videos like this, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Before you go, make sure to check out these two fascinating videos. Thanks for watching the History Stop, and we'll see you next time.